Myanmar is beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's really worth it. Definitely do come here. Definitely come and check it out. I am going to give you 11 travel tips to help you prepare for your adventure to Myanmar slash Burma. I am shooting this video in my hotel room here in Yangon and after one month of traveling through Thailand and Burma with Robin, uh, this is my last day here. I fly out this afternoon and Robin flew out this morning at about 6, 7 o'clock this morning. And that's it, I thought I'd put these 11 travel tips together for you because a lot of information online about Myanmar is out of date. Uh, after experiencing four days in Bagan, by the way, you must check out that place, Bagan. It's absolutely stunning. You have to go and see that place. Dedicate at least three days to Bagan. Um, we've learned that, I've because I've been to India maybe seven years ago, that I've, I, I feel like Myanmar is just very small and laid back version of India. The people are so friendly, the food is amazing. It is just such a beautiful place and highly recommend everybody come here and check it out, especially Bagan. These are tips as of December 2018 up to date. So the first thing is the tourist tax of 25 Australian dollars per person that you have to pay. If you're flying into Bagan, then you must pay a 25,000 chat archaeological fee uh, for access to Bagan as a tourist, which is valid for three days. Now, Robin and I, we booked our flights to Myanmar with very little notice, three days notice. We didn't plan to come here, uh, but we already had our visas sorted out in advance. And we were like, oh, we were whisked away the moment we walked off our flight to a service counter at Bagan Airport where we had to pay 25,000 chat per person. Um, so just keep in mind, have that budget for the archaeological fee. It's to access the temples. Bagan itself is part of the archaeological zone, so you have to pay the fee. Keep that in mind. The second one is the Burmese chat. It's the local currency. Now, there was a lot of confusion that Robin and I had, especially me, about you know where to get chat from. And you know, it's, it's spelled K-Y-A-T-S, chats. It's pronounced chat. I thought it was kayats, but it's actually chats. Hey guys, 9th of December, Sunday, 2 p.m. We're in Mandalay in Myanmar slash Burma. And uh, this is the airport area. And before we leave, we're actually gonna draw some cash out. I'm gonna test to see if my card actually works and then Rob's is gonna try her card. We've actually got 400 US dollars cash. If you ever come to Burma or Myanmar, um, the thing is to bring US dollars and then convert the US dollars once you're here to, I think it's chats or kayats, I don't know how to pronounce it. And so that's the local currency here and I've got some in my wallet actually. Um, the easiest way of getting chats, Burmese chats, is to bring US dollars with you and get it changed at the money changer here in Myanmar or you can actually get money out from an ATM machine with your local credit card, your local bank. We've had no problems whatsoever taking money out. So Burmese chats, that's what they look like. Pretty cool. 5,000 chat denominations, uh, 10,000 chat. It's pretty cool. I like this currency, it's really, really nice. That's what it looks like. So yeah, very easy to get the chat. I believe you can't get chats outside of Myanmar but you can if you go through a currency exchange place at the airport when you arrive. That's the second one. The third one is dress attire for temples. Now, for men, you need to wear, it's the lungi or the lungi. Um, it's, I actually have it in my suitcase. Oh, here we go. I actually, I actually bought the lungi uh, for about 5,000 chats from a local market here. It literally looks like a tablecloth, right? 
and you step through this thing, you tie it up, the guy's tied up at the front, the girl's tied up at the side and the back, I think. Oh, you tied to the side. Yeah, tight. Yeah, oh, to the back. Oh, that's very nice. Very traditional. Yes. We should get it. Um, you need to wear one before you go into any of the temples or religious sites uh, here in Myanmar. And uh, you can buy them from, as I said, a marketplace or even outside the temple. They usually have a place where you can buy these lungis for like 5,000 chats or something. It's like five, three to five Australian dollars. The fourth one is hot air ballooning is a must do. Now, I'm not sure if you saw previous videos of our travel series here in Myanmar, but we went hot air ballooning in Bagan, and it is it is expensive, it is a lot of money. It cost, I think, 400 something US dollars. It was a lot of money, but it is, it is worth it. You have to do it. If you've got the budget for it, definitely, definitely, definitely do it. You can book online through, I think there are four or five operators that operate balloon um, operations out of Bagan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of the images that you see are hot air balloons with all these temples and that those shots are taken in Bagan B-A-G-A-N that's where all those photos are taken it's like the famous photo like it's like the Cappadocia of Myanmar it's like hundreds of hot air balloons and all these temples and this fog that kind of sits over the top of the the vegetation and the temples. Really, really amazing. We had the best experience. We shot a separate video on that. Go and check it out. <laughs> oh, like this. This is the tradition. Do we eat either side of the yeah, croissant? Yeah. But if you have the budget for it, you must do hot air ballooning in Bagan. You'll wake up at crazy hours in the morning, like 5.30 in the morning or something, but you'll get back to your hotel at you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, you can sleep for a few hours and then go out and explore. And another tip as well relating to hot air ballooning is uh, sometimes the weather's not desirable, so make sure that if you're booking hot air ballooning, you're doing so at the beginning of your trip so that if there is a cancellation or a delay, then you can move within the time that you are in Bagan. Don't leave the hot air ballooning until your last day because if it is cancelled, you won't be able to reschedule. So just keep that in mind. The next one is uh, tip number five is e-bikes. Now it sounds like e-bikes is a weird expression, but e-bikes stands for electronic bikes, um, which are battery operated uh, scooters or mopeds, which are the most common form of transport for tourists in Bagan. Here we are guys, <laughs> we're trying out this e-bike for the first time. Very different, guys. So, if you're looking to get away, uh, get around Bagan and do your own thing and explore temples in your own time, there are different options. You can hire a driver or a taxi to take you around. It is expensive. You can hire a push bike or a bicycle to do that. But Bagan is such a big area and there are so many temples that it's not practical to be on a push bike riding around, in my opinion. So the easiest way and the most cost effective way of getting around Bagan is an e-bike. Uh, they're really weird to ride at first. I ride motorbikes back home um, in Melbourne. Um, I've ridden scooters and sports bikes and for years and I got on an e-bike for the first time and it was, it was strange. <laughs> it was really weird, but after about five or 10 minutes, I got used to it. It's very easy to ride. Um, you, you just hit the accelerator a little bit and I mean, they're like very responsive. I didn't even know how to drive this thing. It's on. Yep, accelerate. There we go. Yeah, you're right, that's okay. Just accelerate a little bit. <laughs> accelerate. It no, it's not. It is. No, it's not. Accelerate it more, accelerate more. So about seven Australian dollars per day is how much you pay to hire these e-bikes and it's, ho it's totally worth it, it's the easiest way of getting around. The next one is uh, tip number six, maps.me. 
Um, I'll put this up on your screen, a little icon. There's a little app, a smartphone app for your phone that you can download. It's called Maps.me. If you're a seasoned traveler and you've traveled through Asia or areas that have very little to no Wi-Fi, excuse me, or no internet connection, Maps.me is an amazing app that allows you to have access to maps when you don't have an, an internet connection. So Google Maps, as we all know, we, it, use, it works because we have internet connection that allows it to work, but maps.me, you can actually download the maps for the country that you plan on traveling to, and when you go into an area where there's no Wi-Fi or no internet, then you're still able to have detailed access to navigation and maps. And I found that maps.me was handy because um, when I downloaded the map for, make sure you do this before you fly into Myanmar, however, um, Make sure with the internet connection you'll download the map for Myanmar and when you are here and you need to know where all your temples are and you, for example, you're on your e-bike and you're like, what temple is this? You just load up maps.me, I might even have it right now, I'll show you. You load up maps.me and you're like, what temple am I looking at? Because trust me, there, is, there are thousands of temples, it's very easy to get lost. Then you can look at this and go, oh, I am... I am at that tip. That, that, so that's what maps.me looks like. And you can you can easily determine what temple you're at. Anyway, so that's maps.me. Download it. The next one is number seven, trying local food, i.e. tea leaf salad, shan noodles, etc. So I know some people watching this might be freaked out because they're like, well, you know, the food is, I might get food poisoned and I, the food's not, I, you know, it's not safe. I have no idea. I don't have no idea what half the stuff is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. What do you think that is, Robs? It looks like potato and onion. Like some kind of relish. I must say, now this is ironic because yesterday I got food poisoned in Yangon, here. So I've been in my hotel room, have not moved. However, the previous four, the previous four weeks, I have not had any issues with any food-related issues in Bagan, eating street food anywhere else in Thailand or Burma or, or Myanmar, uh, except I went to a fancy restaurant with Robin one or two nights ago. We went to a Mexican restaurant. It wasn't even like the local food. It was a Mexican restaurant. The food otherwise is amazing. You must, must try the local Burmese food. The tea leaf salad is, and, and we've done previous videos on this. Go and check them out where we go and sample the local cuisine. We take photos of it. We, we taste test it. Uh, we go to some of the smallest little places in Bagan and we try the local you know, tea leaf salad. We go to the markets and try food. Um, it is so cheap, it costs you no more than like three uh, Australian dollars, four Australian dollars for you know a nice meal. And it's authentic, it's raw, it's fresh. It tastes amazing. We had no issues with the food poisoning or anything like that, except going to a fancy restaurant in Yangon and Mexican, it wasn't even the local food, but anyway. All right, so the next tip is learn the lacquerware process, tip number eight. Um, this is like, you'll see this everywhere. If you're traveling through Bagan in Myanmar, you'll see that there are so many lacquerware shops that you can go and buy, you know, you know, things for your kitchen, your dining room, like if you want to furnish your house, there are so many things that are made from lacquer and bamboo, and it's such a big part of the culture here. So. Um, I want to say that make some time, one or two days, to actually go and explore these lacquerware shops. This is okay. the only hot bamboo. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is made of thick wood. Oh, teak wood. Teak yep. wood. Yep. Three different, same process. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a lacca juice. Lacca oh, juice. look at that. Yeah, lacca juice that come from a tree. Yeah. Lacca tree. What's yeah. the name of the tree? Lacca tree. Lacca tree. You know yeah. rubber tree? Yeah. Rubber. Yeah. Rubber. Similar. Yeah. Okay, uh, similar yeah. like to the rubber tree. Okay. okay. This lacca one layer the bay mm -hmm. for drying it and the grow one week wait to dry. Mm -hmm. Rob and I, we did a separate video on this where we take you through the process. We filmed it. The guy was very generous to take us in, through his whole process for he's a fourth generation lacquerware um you know 
creator, I guess, whatever they're called, right? Um, and so he walked us through this process and it was fascinating about how they dry, how they, you know, how they carve all the detail. All this, all these carvings here on this cup are all carved by hand. So we like met his parts of his family that all they did was they design, you know, the detail in each of the products that they were selling. And so, um, if you if you're into kind of like maybe if you want to furnish your house your dining room or whatever it is then you know budget for maybe a couple hundred US dollars to buy some of this stuff um, and it's, it's worth it not only do you support a family because uh, they work really really hard it can take you know usually four months just to make this cup four to five months just to make this and you know when you see the process you really appreciate the workmanship and hard and hard work that goes into making something like this which seems so basic but takes four to five months for it to 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 look like that number nine try sugarcane juice on the street something a little different i only saw this last time i saw this was in when i was traveling uh, to zanzibar in africa um, when you're walking around it's very common in Bagan to see these little machines with a bucket next to it with stalks of sugarcane and I spent you know 10 years living in Queensland next to sugarcane farms and you can imagine how excited I got when I saw the sugarcane grinding machines uh, in Bagan and so all you do is you roll up you pay like a thousand chat right which is one Australian dollar and they will take these stalks of sugarcane and they'll put them through these machines what this machine it'll then squeeze the stalks and then out the other side will come the juice then they'll sometimes add a lime a wedge of lime or a wedge of lemon and and then you'll get this cup of amazingly fresh squeezed sugarcane juice with no added sugar it's absolutely amazing you must try it it looks pretty cray like weird and risky and not hygienic but it's really really nice and I do suggest you try it so it's trying sugarcane on the street and if I haven't already I'll show you some video clips of what that looks like number 10 do one sunrise and one sunset at a pagoda now there are thousands of these pagodas in Bagan and so the most common activity for tourists that go to Bagan or backpackers is to find one pagoda to do at least one sunset and one sunrise we did the sunrise uh, from the hot air balloon and we did several sunsets from several different pagodas. Now, ask a local. This is the easiest way of doing it. If you do research online about which pagoda to go and climb up on top of and watch the sunset, you, you might find that that information is not only out of date, because when you go to that pagoda, that pagoda might have suffered damage from like the monsoon or rains or an earthquake and so they're fixing and repairing it so you won't have access to it the easiest way is just when you get there ask a local say hey you know can you take me to and what will happen is they'll you know they'll even offer to take you to a pagoda to watch the sunset but there's an expectation that you at least look at some of their paintings um, and you know there's an expectation to even buy some of their paintings which I as another tip I do suggest you buy one or two paintings it's totally worth the investment because it's like the stories behind the paintings it's just incredible Buddha Buddha a future Buddha yeah this before they in Yama open the five Buddha four mm -hmm. Buddha are already this a Nesh Kami the Buddha the night and body etc future Buddha you see the my painting beautiful feet beautiful hand beautiful life more much did it because in Bega selling the many people but mm -hmm. different quality mm -hmm. find out which pagoda to watch a sunset from and get your camera ready because it's absolutely amazing watching a sunset in Bagan with all of the temples around absolutely amazing so just keep that in mind one sunrise and one sun and doing a sunrise in Bagan means waking up at like 4 30 in the morning with a little map and a torch right but it's worth it you must do it the next one is number 11 is atm machines are everywhere so one of the things i read online was that there there's a lot of people were saying in different blog posts and things like that that it's very hard to get it's very hard to draw money out from atm machines in Bagan or Myanmar. But the truth is that there are atm machines everywhere as of december 2018 there is machine there are atm machines like convenience stores 
you have no problems, you know, withdrawing money or, you know, unless your bank, unless you haven't told your bank in advance that you're going to Myanmar, like we had no issues with taking money out from ATM machines. There was only one ATM machine that had no money in it, like no cash, um, but you know, every other machine was fine. So don't freak out if you read blog posts and they're like, oh, I have to take US dollars and I have to take all this US dollars and get it converted. You don't have to do that. Just take 150, 200 US dollars per person. That's all I took. Uh, Robin and I, between us, we had 400 US dollars. Half of that we put toward our accommodation because there are some hotels and restaurants that only accept US dollars. The last tip that I want to give you um, is tip number 12 and that is uh, your US dollars must be clean. There must be no tears, uh, folds, creases. Now I read this in a blog post and I thought to myself that's ridiculous. Why would they not accept, why would a hotel not accept uh, you know, a US dollar bill with even the slightest tear in it? It's true. As of December 2018, they are really annoying. Like, I was really frustrated when we had to pay for our hotel in Bagan. They literally sat there and they literally inspected every single US dollar note that we gave them. They were like this. They were literally inspecting it like that. And I sat there and I was like, what the, you gotta be kidding me. And, and they, what happened, they got to this one, this 20 US, this $20 bill, and they said no. And if you look at it, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but there's a little tiny tear there. They're like, no, nope, can't accept it. There's a tear here and a tear there. I don't even know if you can see that on the camera. It'd be a shame if you can't see it, but anyway. So they looked at these ones and they didn't accept, they didn't accept this one. Now, <laughs> if you have a look, there's a little tiny crease up the, the corner, right? They said, no, nope, can't accept it. Make sure that when you're getting your US dollar bills, you have to inspect, you have to inspect, because I have US dollar bills here which I can't use. I can't use these, unfortunately. So I have useless bills. Now, what I failed to do was when I accepted these US dollar bills at my currency exchange place in Melbourne, Australia, I didn't inspect them and I should have. If the currency, if the money changer gives you, you must inspect them and you must hand them back. If they have a little crease or a little tear or a mark, or if they're folded like this, if it's creased like that, they won't accept it. And I know you're going to sound like an idiot when you're in a, at a money changer place, but you've got to tell them you've watched this video because it's real. Like they're really, they don't accept this currency if it's creased or folded or marked in any way. So one thing you can do once you inspect the US dollar bills at your money changer in your local, in your country, make sure that when you're storing them, make sure that they're in a flat wallet. So you, you make sure they're flat. The mistake that I had made, or we had made, was that some of them were creased like this. They don't accept that. So anyway, hope that's helpful. Um, otherwise, uh, that's all I can come up with, the 12 tips. If you have any questions, let me or myself or Robin know. Um, I'm not an absolute authority, but we have spent a week here. We do have some experience here. Definitely reach out to me if you plan on coming here. This is nevertheless an amazing country. Myanmar is beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's really worth it. Definitely do come here. Definitely come and check it out. Um, there are so many beautiful places here and the people are, are so wonderful and caring and happy and nurturing. And so Rob's and I are definitely planning a trip back here again in the next one to two years. And we're definitely going to come back here for longer. One week is not enough. You need to spend at least a month here. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If you have anything else you want to add or share, let me know. Contact me directly. Otherwise, enjoy your trip to Myanmar. See you in the future. Goodbye.